For centuries, the lands of myth have lived in peace. But when an old enemy threatens myth and its magic, Fable and Brendan must work together to put a stop to him and save both myth and earth. But with a broken past, can there be a bright future? This is their story. Chapter 2 Darnacy With a small cart filled with fresh potions and Bluebell the Mule to pull it, Creek and Fable were off to the elven village of Darnacy. Settled in a large clearing of the Lasmore Forest, the town itself looked unattractive. With its gray rooftops, chiseled stone walls, and unmaintained gardens, Darnacy held a homey atmosphere. The village had a breaking economy, which is mainly supported by trade, cooking, and crafting. But the town's biggest strengths were strong magicians and sustainable hunting. However, Darnacy lacked people with medical skills. So it was a big deal when the guardian of herbs and healing had chosen Fable to be a keeper. She was more or less infamous for that, some praising her good fortune, and others wondering if she'd turn out like the dark sorcerer that ended the golden era, while others still thought Fable was unfit to be a keeper, even though it wasn't their decision to make. Despite its strengths and weaknesses, Darnacy's future is mostly unseen. Things were up in the air for the little town, and the council were trying their best to help the elven people thrive. But their choices seemed to hinder more than help sometimes. The clopping of Bluebell's hooves in the stone streets announced their arrival, Fable making a small face as they went and noticed a few faces turn their way. She took a slow breath and let Bluebell trot on her way to her little shop. Hey, don't mind them, Creek told her, giving her a little nudge. You'd probably be the best doctor under Ashling's teachings. I just want to be a potions maker, Fable answered, not a doctor. You know I can't stand the sight of blood. I can barely handle injuries. But you're okay with illnesses, Creek answered. Just the common stuff, Fable replied. Like phoenix fever or the cold. Nothing major like bog blight or gut rot. But you'll get there. That's the main thing, Creek told her encouragingly. You shouldn't doubt yourself with magic. Isn't that the base of it? Faith and trust? Babel chuckled. <laughs> I think you're mixing that with Peter Pan. Creek grinned back. Maybe. But maybe there's truth in it. I kind of doubt that, Fable told him as they reached the apothecary, lovingly called the Abracadabra Apothecary. She liked the ancient word for transmutation for the shop, seeing as she turned herbs into useful teas, tinctures, balms, and potions for everyday use. Heck, she used extras on herself when she could spare it. They moved Bluebells around to the back and started unloading the cart, while the mule drank some water. The inside of the shop would tickle one's nose with the scent of mixing herbs. There were jars of dried herbs for other potion makers, a small window garden of fresh, if fairly common, herbs, as well as an array of many other completed teas and whatnots. Fable loved the abracadabra, and she even made a little tea-serving nook in the corner with a few books that she couldn't fit at home for people to stop and enjoy while sampling teas. Go ahead and turn the open sign, would ya? Fable asked. We're in for a busy day. Will you be helping out? Wish I could, but I'm helping the smiths in the forge, Creek answered. They're finishing up a batch of silver brooches that need to be set out today. Fable smiled. No problem. I should be able to handle things, she said, having a feeling that her apothecary wouldn't be the only stop on people's minds for today. How about we meet at the Moonrise Bonfire? You bet. I'll see you there, Creek answered as he stepped out of the front door. The bell above it chiming a silver ring as he left, and he flipped the open sign for Fable as he went. Fable watched him go, taking a slow breath. She gave her hands a clap before donning her green apron, twisting her hair back, and slipping her wand into her hair to keep it up. Okay, let's begin, she told herself as she got a pot of hot water boiling for sample teas. It turned out to be a rather busy day at the Abracadabra. Elves, dwarves, and even a couple satyrs had stopped in for the lunar sight potions, as well as other little odds and ends for their own uses. Fable had made good coin with the profits, and once the sun began to descend, she closed up the shop and set out 
for some treats of her own. Darnacy was already bustling. Some of the elven children were even playing with little paper dragons by using magic to make them fly around and land on various things and friends. And most of the hunters and butchers were serving honey-glazed venison over dragon flame, provided by their hearth drakes. These colorful creatures were like the cousins of the fox drakes, but they weren't guardians. They were companions. Some people used them for glass making, others for cooking delectables. The biggest difference was that while a hearth drake could breathe fire, most fox drakes couldn't. That is, unless they were a guardian of fire. Fable smiled as she walked, eventually purchasing a sugar glazed apple with toffee bits. She held the basket of the candied fruit as she walked down the street, the light around her turning golden as she walked it in the sunset. The moonrise bonfire would be soon, and she looked around for a creek as she moved through the town. That is until she felt an unwelcome presence behind her. Fable pressed her lips together and groaned. Oh, I thought you were staying at your cottage, came a voice she dreaded to hear. Fable turned, putting on a friendly smile, at least as friendly as she could muster. Of course not, Lark. I'd never miss out on this. Lark Starscribe, the sweetheart of Darnacy and daughter of one of the council members. She was gifted in magic and its uses, and was well respected for these details. In fact, of all people that had the possibility to earn the favor of a fox drake, it would have been her. So when Ashling had chosen a nameless elf, someone whose family who hadn't earned a surname for their part of the village, was astounding. The Starscribe family were in a long line of stargazers, able to see changes in the future by watching the stars. And after the first Starscribe had proven her skills so foresight among the stars and became a council member, she was given a surname. Lark was a lovely elf, with hair of rich red wine and eyes of silver starlight. She had potential to be a powerful sorceress. Beside her was her friend, Juniper. She was pretty, with raven hair and deep purple eyes. And she was skilled in divination magic. Her elf runes were never far from her hand for a chance to read someone's future. But the worst part was that compared to them, Fable looked like she could be working in the back of a bakery instead of running her own apothecary. Lark looked at Fable, her small basket of goods, and her simple clothes. Fable tried to push the fact aside that there was a stain on the hem of her skirt where a potion had splashed her earlier. Where's Lady Ashling? Lark asked. She's with her clan, Fable answered. She knew Creek wasn't comfortable with his intuitive feelings yet, and she didn't want to draw attention to him. Oh, has she grown bored of the little potion maker? Lark asked. Her voice so sticky with false honey that it made Fable's cheek turn rosy with annoyance and discomfort. Of course not, Fable answered, trying to keep her own temper in check. But I don't keep her on a leash. She comes and goes as she wishes, and I'm certain the clan has their own traditions too. Now I would stay, but I'm meeting Creek for the bonfire. She started to turn away when she heard the clickety-clack of elf runes being shuffled. She glanced back to see Juniper opening her palm and look at the runes in her hand. Juniper hummed. The moon and the scythe, she said, her voice quiet but in a tone that made one's heart want to pause in anticipation. Sudden and long-term change is coming. Their secrets hidden and agendas abound. She lifted her purple eyes to Fable. And danger. What's been happening, Fable? Fable gulped. I honestly couldn't tell you, she said. I'm just here for the festivities. You know, the bonfire and all. She stepped back from them, her quiet nature taking over before she bumped into someone behind her. She looked and felt a wave of relief wash over her as she saw Thrush. The tall elf looked at the two girls with a long look. A bonfire we should all be heading to, especially you, Lady Lark. Aren't you supposed to be standing with your father on the stand? Lark pressed her lips together, but nodded. I am, but I couldn't help but say hello to Fable. She gave Fable a smile. Lighten your dark, she said, the common way one elf bade farewell to another. And with a flurry of silks, the two were striding away. Fable sighed and looked at Thrush. Thank you, she said. No need to thank, Thrush answered warmly. Those two seem to have let their family's reputations get to their heads. Come on. You mentioned Creek was meeting you? 
Fable nodded and followed Thresh. The potions master was tall with earthy skin and sky blue eyes. While he wasn't built like a blacksmith, as most people think he would be by description, Thresh was well toned and tall, pointed ears holding back long black dreadlocks that wasn't pulled back into a half ponytail. He was Fable's first teacher when she started seeking her path, and it was working with him that eventually led to her forming a bond with Ashling. Don't let those two get to you, Thresh informed her. Everyone should know the lesson of you don't deserve everything. But be glad for the blessings you have, Fable finished. True, but it bothers me that it bothers them so much. About me becoming a keeper. We all thought only the surnamed would be considered keepers. Well, magic is all about change and cycles, Thresh answered. Perhaps that's needed to be retaught. Fable smiled and gave a small nod. She could agree to that. Soon enough, the two reached the square. A large bonfire had been prepared with oak and various herbs that bring luck and prosperity. All around the square were flags and small vendors and tents for various festival services, like skin painting with patterns that made one look like their skin was stained glass, fortune telling, and a couple of small food vendors. Fable instantly spotted Creek. The carrot top was bouncing and waving to get her attention, getting a few looks thrown at him from passing elves and other patrons to the festival. After bidding Thrush a hurried goodbye, Fable quickly moved to Creek's side. What took ya? He asked. Couldn't forget about your sweet tooth, Fable teased as she offered him some of her sugar apple. Creek grinned at her and accepted the slice. Your tardiness is forgiven he said as he crunched into it. The crowd hushed as the council appeared behind the bonfire. All five wearing a robe colored for an element. Sapphire for water, bronze for earth, gold for fire, amethyst for air, and white for soul. The politics for the elves were unique, but Fable always found them boring. She just knew they worked as four mares and a head mare. The head, or soul member, would then meet with the other soul members under their head, the Elven King. Under the Elven King were five villages. Darnesey, the Earth Village. Hollowport, the Water Village. Tyriani, the Fire Village. Erast, the Air Village. And Goldenleaf, the capital of Soul Village. It was always a big to-do when the soul member went to Goldenleaf to speak with the High Council. Behind the water member was Lark. Since water was closely related to the moon and stars, the star scribes had always been the water members of the council. Lark looked at Fable, and Fable quickly looked away as movement from another member caught her attention. Forrest, the sole member of Darnesey, raised his hands, and the village fell silent. Welcome, my friends and neighbors, he greeted, and I bid you all a happy full moon festival. As the moon reflects the sunlight in the darkest hours of the night, may our support and kindness be reflected back on each other in this time. And may what visions the moon may bring us tonight be beneficial to further better our crafts, our relationships, and our paths. With this blessing, we light the fire that reminds us of the passions that burns within us all. With that, he and the other four members all held up their hands and summoned a small flame, each holding a different hue that matched their stations. Together they laid the flames in the bonfire, which quickly caught into a radiant blaze of blues, bronze, gold, purples, and whites. And as the flames leaped to the sky, the elves cheered and raised their hands into the air, some starting to dance as the music began to play. Creek smiled as he watched the elves around him start to dance before looking at Fable. She was looking at the fire, her thoughts elsewhere for the moment. Seeing as their treat was eaten, he took her by the hands and pulled her toward the dancing circle. What? Creek! She started, but Creek only laughed as they were pulled into the joyful dancing. Fable rolled her eyes and laughed, but danced along with Creek, deciding to forget about Lark, about being a keeper about her expectations in the village, and about politics. 
It was the full moon festival, a night of fun and celebration, of friends, and for dreams of what would lay ahead. Tonight was for fun, and she let it be that way. Thank you for listening to The Guardians and Keepers of Myth. You can support the story by becoming a patron on Silver Cavern's Patreon page. First tier will give you early access to new episodes in written form. The second tier allows you behind-the-scenes glimpses to the creation of Fox Drake dolls. You can also follow Silver Caverns on Facebook and Instagram. This fantasy serial podcast is written, produced, and performed by Emily Davis. Special thanks goes to my Keepers in Waiting patrons. Lucy Estrada Oliveira, Christina McKinney, and Matthew Bain. Thank you all so much for your support. I really appreciate it.